Plot twists are strange beasts in film. If used well, they can leave audiences reeling, mentally rocked by the body blow of a betrayal or shocking surprise. Yet they can't just be chucked in willy-nilly for the sake of it, as time and time again we've been witness to plot twists that feel all too desperate. Of course the killer was this dude in the group who laughed all the time. Of course the room had a secret key in the toilet. Of course the moon was behind the JFK assassination. It was so obvious and insults our intelligence. Come on, guys. And worse still is when the plot twists make plot holes so big you can see right through to the director crying in their hands for somebody to think that they're clever. Poor little fella. They tried their best. With this in mind, I'm Jules from WhatCulture.com, and these are seven famous movie plot twists that created huge plot holes. Number seven, the power loss inconsistency, Hancock. At the end of the pretty, just, okay meta-comic book movie Hancock, the wayward anti-hero learns that his new friend Ray's wife, Mary, is also an invincible god-type being, and that they're destined to be together as a pair, and that they lose their powers when they're together. Wow, it's just... Everything just sucks about that, especially for Ray. That's just harsh. And yet, despite the confirmation of power sapping, how come Hancock and Mary can sometimes fight so ferociously that they destroy lots of downtown LA? If their being in the same room drains their power so quickly that it means that they're now open to taking serious amounts of damage, how could they even throw any real punches? Number six, how the hell does Earth become a planet of the apes? Planet of the Apes, 2001. The original Planet of the Apes might have one of the greatest movie plot twists of all time, but when Tim Burton decided to remake it, he decided to stamp all over that legacy by shoehorning in a plot twist so downright inane that it can barely be explained. It involves a time tunnel and the replacement of modern Earth with an ape-like equivalent, complete with a new ape-like Lincoln Memorial, which was pretty goddamn ballsack. But how does it make sense at all? If the apes from the future somehow manage to travel back into the past further than Davidson in an attempt to change Earth's history, then with that changed history established, the events leading up to the point in which the apes went back in time wouldn't have ever taken place to begin with. Ow, my brain. Number five, Loki's forgettable powers. Thor and the Avengers. In the post credits stinger of Thor, it's revealed that Dr. Selvig is actually being controlled by Loki as he talks to Nick Fury about the Tesseract. Weirdly, when it comes to the Avengers, Loki isn't controlling Selvig anymore and the whole opening is focused on him taking control of the scientist and Hawkeye. So what are we supposed to believe? Did Loki just decide he needed a better means to control him, better than the previously successful way that he already was using? Worse still, if Loki can apparently influence anybody he likes, what's the big deal about the fact that he can just do it in the Avengers? Can't he just control everybody? With this power established, why isn't Loki just doing this stuff all the time? Number 4. The Idiotic Autopilot – Wally At the end of Wally, after the little robot ends up on the Axiom spaceship with the descendants of Earth's displaced former residence twist, it turns out that the ship's HAL 9000-like autopilot has been secretly programmed to prevent the human race from ever returning to Earth. Which begs the highly important question, why is the autopilot sending robots down to Earth in the first place, if the entire purpose and ultimate mission hinges on the fact that living matter not be discovered? As soon as a plant is put into the spaceship's central chamber, after all, it automatically puts the spaceship back on course for Earth. And that's not to mention the fact that Auto actually tells the captain about the plant, despite him being the only person capable of overriding the secret directive not to return. That's just sloppy. Number 3. Why aren't the aliens killed the moment they arrive if they're allergic to water? Signs. When all hope seems lost at the end of M. Night Shyamalan's alien invasion movie, the twist reveals itself, that the aliens are actually allergic to water. I know, it's dumb. In the sense that it kills them dead. Mankind rejoices, presumably with a refreshing glass of death juice. Whether it's entertaining or not, it makes no sense. If the aliens are allergic to water, the moisture and vapour in the air would have instantly affected them to a point where they couldn't get themselves locked in closets or be awkwardly recorded on camera at children's birthday parties. They would have been screwed the moment they opened up their spaceship doors and stepped out. Also, just a side note, why would a super advanced race of intelligent beings invade a planet that is 71% water? Did they have a f***ing death wish? Number 2. How can you change the future if you plan to live in the past? Back to the Future 1 and 2. 
The twist at the end of the original Back to the Future movie was that Marty wasn't as done with time travel meddling as he originally thought. The future needed him, and his kids were in trouble, and it's up to him to travel there to prevent it all from happening. Except that makes no sense. I mean, think about it. Doc only needed to tell Marty and Jennifer that in 2015, they needed to ensure that something was done about their kids. Going to the future and changing events there accomplishes nothing, because everybody plans on coming back to the present. If you live in the present, what does it matter if the future gets changed, given that you don't live there and it hasn't happened yet? You'll only have to repeat everything again when you catch up to it because anything you change hasn't happened. Ow, my brain. Again. And number one, why doesn't Dr. Crow realize he's a fucking ghost? The Sixth Sense. In arguably the world's most famous plot twist, it turns out at the end of The Sixth Sense that Bruce Willis's psychologist Dr. Crow was a ghost all along, and he didn't even realise it, which is, which is brilliant if you ignore almost everything that came before it. Shyamalan only pulls this off because he only allows us to see moments where Dr. Crow is either talking to a kid we eventually realise can speak to ghosts, or by placing him in situations where he wouldn't have been talking to anyone anyway. But start asking logical questions and it falls apart. For instance, how does Dr. Crow do his job without realizing he doesn't exist? Why doesn't he notice that literally nobody talks to him? How does he even get the job to talk to Cole in the first place? Why wasn't he seriously annoyed when the waiter didn't ask him if he wanted to order anything at the restaurant? Is he an idiot as well as a ghost? Is that the real twist? My god. And that's our list. Let us know of any more twists that created huge plot holes in the comment section below. Then why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon.